Hey, what's up everybody? This is Tyler with Your Movie Fix. Today I want to give a quick rundown and crash course on aspect ratio and the Justice League aspect ratio and why it shouldn't really be considered that big of a deal, but I'm seeing a lot of examples that are kind of incorrect or misleading and a lot of people seem to be kind of upset for some reason about what the aspect ratio actually is. So Zach told us recently that the movie was going to be in 1.66. Now, this isn't a, you know, brand new aspect ratio used. It's just very, very uncommon, especially for blockbusters. Um, there really has not ever been a blockbuster movie ever released in this aspect ratio. So it's very tall, and I want to just take a quick look at what that's going to look like on your TV and the actual truth of aspect ratio and how it works. So right here, I've got a production still from Justice League. This was released a long while back. Um, and this image itself is actually 1.31, about that, when I measured out the pixels. So this is going to be the actual whole image that the cameras are shooting on. Um, so when they're looking at the monitors, assuming the VFX and everything were completed, this is the raw production still of what it's going to be. Now, most people are used to seeing a very widescreen um, format with movies, which is very commonly 2.4.0. Now, this is 1.31. This isn't what's going to be shown really in any theaters, not even IMAX. What you're typically going to see in IMAX is 1.43. So if you look at it right here, I've cropped that down to 1.43, to 1.66, and 2.40. Um, now, really, aspect ratio is just a tool to, to present the image. Now, just as it wasn't shot on an anamorphic lens, which you kind of have to shoot, or you have to present basically a 2.40, or a very wide format with an anamorphic lens because it's smushing the image. But this wasn't shot with an anamorphic lens, so he had a very large image, that 1.3 something. And the 1.43 is typically what you're going to see in IMAX. 1.66 um, is kind of an in in-between. Um, that's larger than what your TV is, and that's why it's going to have stuff on the sides. So really, all three of these images, they're the same width. They're the same pixel width. You aren't losing any image. Um, and that's that was a misconception that you were losing uh, image on the sides. And that's not true. They're all the same width. They would just be cropping out of the top and bottom. And it's just a framing tool. That's really all it is. So here's the three of them together. And we see 240 right here, which most people are used to seeing. And when you use this aspect ratio, you can kind of play with your framing. Now, this isn't a perfectly centered image from that production still because you have room to play with it. You can play with the scene and move it as it needs to be. And this is what most people are used to seeing. So we go from this over to 1.66. Now we have more image on the top and bottom, and that's why on the sides we kind of just, it's, it's just scaling it. We're not losing anything on the sides. And then 143, which we are not going to get the movie in this format, but this is pretty much what it would look like in IMAX. So again, here's a one, uh, this is a 240 image from BVS, and a lot of people think that they are cropping it um, from this. That's not true. That's not what they're doing. Um, that's kind of what they would do for pan and scan back on VHS and when TVs were only in um, a 4x3 aspect ratio, but that is not going to be what's happening. They're taking the largest format of the image and then cropping it down. So this is what 1.66 is going to look like on your TV, and then with the black bars. So I hope that shed a little bit of light on how aspect ratio actually is. And just remember that it's, it's really a tool of presentation, um, and that usually the image that we're seeing, um, it's a lot bigger. Our, our, what they pull from is a much bigger raw file, and they crop it down for a means of presentation. And why this is kind of a big deal for Justice League is that no blockbuster has ever been presented in this large of a format. Um, even the BVS, like IMAX version that had a couple of scenes, or take Aquaman or the Dark Knight movies, those are great examples. They do feature their IMAX scenes because the whole movie was not shot with IMAX cameras. Now, IMAX cameras are really a difference of resolution. Um, they're not really, they don't really have anything to do with the eye, the aspect ratio. So say you shoot on an IMAX camera, it comes out to more like 16K, you know, like 1080p and 4K, 
An IMAX camera is actually going to shoot around 16K, which is insane. That's a very high resolution because you're putting it up on a giant screen. Now, Justice League was filmed um, with a camera that actually shoots. Now, it was film, but there's a conversion you have to do for film to digital when they digitize the, all the footage. And it actually comes out to about 6K is what Justice League was filmed at. So this is a very big image, and it would still look great on a huge screen. Um, it's just that it wasn't actually filmed with an IMAX camera. Most movies you see um, put in IMAX weren't actually filmed with IMAX cameras because IMAX cameras are very expensive. They're very loud. They require a lot of ADR work afterwards um, to work around. And Zach fell in love with working with the IMAX cameras on BVS, and that's why he's stuck with using a camera that's going to use a larger aspect ratio. But that doesn't require all the extra work that or cost that comes with an actual IMAX camera. And something else that I just want to add and clarify too is that IMAX isn't limited to any one single format. Going to an IMAX theater is really just a way of seeing a movie on the biggest screen possible. And when movies are shot with IMAX cameras, it's just to take advantage of that large screen and having the highest resolution or whatever it may be because there are plenty of 240 movies that even get shown in IMAX theaters that don't actually you know they're not benefiting from how tall an IMAX screen is so I just wanted to add that in just remember that IMAX isn't strictly limited to only 1.43 or only 240 it you just want to be able to show a movie that can take advantage of it so say you've got Aquaman and the Dark Knight, those have scenes, just a handful of scenes that expand um, to their IMAX, you know, to fill your TV. But even that is only filling up to 1.78. This is going to be the entire movie in 1.66 is what, what he says is going to be dropping on HBO Max. So we're getting the largest format comic book movie ever released. And I actually think that is a pretty big deal because... Um, even Infinity War and Endgame, those movies were pretty famously filmed entirely with IMAX cameras. The only way you got to experience that was in an IMAX theater. Because when they released those for home, they cropped them all the way down to 240. So I, it makes no sense. Why would you film the entire movie with IMAX cameras? Not just small portions of it, the entire thing. And then they can't even give it to us in the, a large format that the TV can handle. They still crop it down to 1.78. And this is actually a very, very cool thing that Zach is doing. And it's something that he has never done. He usually is pretty uh, purist with presenting things in 2.4.0. But like I said, he, he really enjoyed it on BVS. And that's why we're getting an entire movie in this large-scale format. So... This is going to be the largest presented comic book movie ever released. Really the, the largest blockbuster um, that's been released. Because this aspect ratio is used in, in smaller movies, indie films. Um, all of the classic like Disney movies, a lot of them use this aspect ratio. But no like large scale epic like action movies, blockbusters were, were ever shot and framed to be presented in this way. And that's why it's actually pretty cool. So I just wanted to shed some light on this. I hope this was informative and helpful. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.